There are 52 weeks in a year, and every week holds some sort of importance to any given person. For select students at Elizabethtown College, that important week was over their winter break. On January 9th, 24 E-Town students volunteered their time to help aid in hurricane relief in Houma, Louisiana. And in turn, six homeowners' lives were changed forever because of this service trip. But what is a service trip? Because it's not just about working on a house for a week. It is about learning a new culture. Becoming friends with people you never met before. Learning how to properly rebuild a house. And becoming part of a family you will never forget. Students at Elizabethtown College learned this firsthand on their trip. And in that week, these students received more than they could ever give back. Service trips of this magnitude had the power to change a person's life forever. And this is the story of how it changed the lives of everyday students. After the information session, students filed out, filled with excitement and nerves about the upcoming mission trip. As unique as these trips are, this one in particular will be special to everyone involved. Let's stop the tape here. That's me on the right. I'm a communications major at Elizabethtown College, and on my left is my partner, Chelsea Decker, also a communications student at Elizabethtown College. Okay, I'll take it from here, Sean. Already going on the trip, Sean and I decided we would make a documentary of our travels and show a story that often gets overlooked. So we bought a camera and rented all the equipment we would need from the communications department and dove into the biggest project of our college careers. I don't know if it was the cold temperatures or the Smurf-like pods we were staying in, but everyone was a little nervous for the week ahead. One thing was for sure though, we were welcomed with open arms by the camp. Soon after arriving, we didn't get much of a break. We were back on the bus to go to a local restaurant for dinner called Big Al's. Big Al's was a huge seafood restaurant, which left me a little nervous considering I don't even like seafood. This is not going to be a good meal. Even though I don't like seafood, Big Al's turned out to be an amazing time. One of the many reasons these service trips are so incredible is that you get to try new things. Even frog legs. <laughs> Trying a frog leg. <laughs> what are you doing? Just petting your beard. Stop it's that. like an animal <laughs> on your face. That's why I grew it. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Which one? Which one do you suggest? That one. All right, try it. It's oh. extra swampy for you. Is it like bone? Oh, no, yeah, yeah. It's gorgeous. Just, just give it a ah, give it a ah. Eat it. Look into the camera. <laughs> It's not bad. Look, it's like a chicken wing. Eat. <laughs> it's, it's like swampy chicken, isn't it? It is like chicken. But it's swampy. <laughs> yeah, it is like swampy chicken. That's right. That's, like, yeah. that's also my code name online. <laughs> swampy chicken. Yep. Yeah. No big deal. After Big Al's, we headed back to camp, where Chris gave us a briefing on the camp itself and what to expect. George gathered the potential team leaders to discuss the game plan for the week. As they hashed out those details, many E-Town students stayed up to play card games, while others got a well-deserved rest.
Site 2 was led by their capable leader, Dave. This house was especially challenging because it had no electricity and heat. The house belonged to Doris Manuel. The family was not living in the house, so unfortunately, they were not around much for us to talk to them. Jim gave every house instructions on what he wanted done. Here. And don't worry about this line being half. Like I say, if it's random, I don't care. Mm -hmm. it, it looks good. It looks just fine. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Come on. I want to hear a real yay. Yes! Yes! <laughs> I'm not here. I don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. Steve's group at Site 3 was pleased to find that their homeowner had a restaurant underneath her home. Needless to say, lunch was never an issue at this house. You can introduce yourself, yeah. My name's Mike. Mike, Lois yeah. Salinas. This is Lois. I'm Dina. Dina. Yes. Bethany. Bethany. Good. <coughs> I'm Steph. Stephanie. Nice to meet you. I'm Pat. Pat. Nice to meet you. Steve. Steve. And our team leader, Steve. Okay. The kitchen was the main focus at this house. It needed to be tiled, and then kitchen cabinets needed to be installed. The team had to clear out all the rooms before getting started for work. And we can stack stuff on top of here. Yeah, yeah. put stuff on top of here. On top, I guess I'll come here. Oh, that's a really big one. She won't be able to. Uh... Site 4 was one of the more interesting houses that week, not only because it had the biggest crew, but because the homeowner, Gail, was crazy. Immediately, this crew knew that they were going to have one fun week. <laughs> but what we're doing, we're doing all the floors in this house. So the biggest challenge is basically to move furniture out of the way, like into half the room, do half the room, move it back. And the reason we got such a large number, you're going to have one crew probably doing laminate flooring in this great room, I call it area. I'll have another crew doing laminate flooring in one of the bedrooms. I'll have another crew doing uh, ceramic tile in here. So really you got three people or three crews working in three different areas, which is fine. Mark had the difficult task of working in a crowded house with Gail, her family, and all the volunteers. But the E-Town students had complete faith in Mark, dubbing him their fearless leader. Uh, I would run. Uncle Ken was the team leader of Site 5, but let's be honest, Aunt Lucy was really running the show. This house needed a lot of work, including the installation of kitchen cabinets. Unfortunately, this house had no working bathroom, so volunteers were forced to walk down the road a quarter mile to Gail's house. First job, though, was to clean out the house of all unusable materials. Site 6 was led by Uncle Don. Much of the work needed to be done was flooring. The homeowner, Hattie, was still living in her home. This was one of the more unique houses our group was assigned because essentially it was a trailer lifted 11 feet She's off the ground. Four hurricanes. Her third house. Her third house, yeah. Her first house she lost. And then I believe she lived, said she lived in a FEMA trailer for two years. And then this is her third house. And it's 11 feet off the ground. Oof. This here is. And it's a, tra yes, it's a normal trailer that's on 11, it's 11 feet high on wood beams. We're doing the hallway. We're gonna put down um, cement board and then linoleum. And in the kitchen, they've already put in the tile, most of the tile floor. So we have to finish that off with grouting and then finish the last few pieces of tile into the living room. No. Uh, uh, Site 1 belonged to Mary Jane Scott. Most of the work being done in this house was in the kitchen and the bathroom. Bob was a team leader of this house, and he deserves an award for having to put up with Maggie and Montana for a week. We're doing a bathroom right now, and we need to tile this floor. So right now, Burl here is taking out the screws, and he's putting them in straight because... Uh, ceramic tile usually doesn't bend very well. Bro, do you want some knee pads? <laughs> no. Let me get the one thirty-eight and a quarter on this oh, one. Oh, so this one is no good. No, yeah, that was the one we okay. changed. <coughs> right? Yeah. Okay. So let's just move this. Alright, so now. 
been wonderful. Great crew to work with. Mm -hmm. Got a lot done and it's, uh, you get a great sense of uh, accomplishment and satisfaction, not only from the work, but also working from a, a great group of, uh, of students and, and uh, other volunteers. Because I'm a communications Nick major and I'm not good with numbers at all, but I'm measuring, so I just want everybody to know that. I'm measuring. I'm she using numbers. Me another piece. <laughs> We are tiling the backsplash of the wall, mm -hmm. and we're also tiling that counter and that bar area. We sometimes we go fishing in the bayou, right? Yeah. So, yeah, we go catch, we go catch crayfish, or not crawfish. No, not crawfish. No, redfish. Yeah. Redfish? <laughs> Okay, that's what we catch. <laughs> and catfish, but we're not allowed to eat it. That's what she told me yesterday. You can't eat the fish around here, right? Yeah, because some people are allergic. Oh, oh. Yeah, okay. allergic to it. Yeah, so you can't, you can't eat it all the time. What else? What else do we do, Mary? Oh, we talked about the hurricane. Yes, so we did. We did. I lost everything I had. Yeah. Moved from one place to the other one. Uh huh. Went to Texas because you have she has she has a big family. It's awesome. Yeah. She has so much family. Why don't you tell them how much family you have? I got 50 grandchildren and five great grandchildren. Go ahead. Yes. And, and we don't need to uh, try to get it straighter than or anything. It did fit. Uh huh. This is beautiful as clothing. Finally. This is not working out so well. These studs, they're impossible. But yeah, I'm having fun. When go on. What are you doing? Um laying down the mastic to the place the tile is on. Did you do all of this? That side and this and Terry is working on that. And what is really great about Dave and this trip is they are professionals, they know what they're doing, they can do it 10 times faster than us, but they take the time to show us, and all of us college kids come in clueless, we fill out our inventories, we don't know how to do anything, and we leave having done all of it, and we're proud as Peacock that we got to use some power tools. Mm -hmm. So we all got a chance to use that. Yeah. I would absolutely recommend this trip to other students because you're amazing. It's amazing what you find in yourself and the, the things that you find in others. And you start to see your fellow peers in a different way and you start to see the world around you in a different way. And that's such a great eye-opening experience I think everyone should have. Um, a lot of my journaling in the beginning was questions and concerns and I miss my family and all that kind of stuff and by the end of it, it was I don't want to go home, I don't want to leave this place, I don't want to leave these people. I could really see like a growth just like from looking from myself, I could see a growth of like my personality and my overall experience just through a few pages. Mm -hmm. I would highly recommend it to anybody who was even thinking about it. It was absolutely amazing. Even if they feel nervous beforehand? Yes. Like you? Do it. Yes. Do it. I'm so excited for next year. Well, I think it's something that you can't learn from reading a book or from doing research online or anything. You actually have to be there and have this hands-on experience and see that um, when disasters come, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And even though we did the smallest little portion of that work, it really affected the people that we helped and helped to move forward the, the overall progress of changing people's lives, which I think is an awesome thing to be able to say we've done as, you know, 18, 19, 20 year olds. 
We often hear on the news stories about corruption or a celebrity doing their part to rebuild the community. The story that is often missed, though, is the countless volunteers who give secondary aid to hurricane victims. And for one week in the bayous of southern Louisiana, a group of 46 people helped another six families get their lives back. A group of people so unique, coming from all different walks of life, as students, retirees, war heroes, and grandparents. New friendships were made, and other friendships grew stronger. The gap between young and old had seemingly disappeared. By the end of the week, we had not only bonded, but we had shared the same overwhelming feeling of giving back. Hurricanes, we've just been beaten down. <laughs> and, but if, as long as you decide to stay, you know. And I, I don't plan to go anywhere until they come drag me out. <laughs> well, I can start by saying this is my first mission trip ever. I don't get out a lot, as I was telling a lot of people. My family is like extremely, extremely close. And I was really nervous about coming down here, like not knowing anyone on the trip. I knew Janice and that was it, coming down here. And I mean, Aunt Gail is a trip and I'm so <laughs> glad I got to know her. And it's just awesome to know that like, I'm out, we're helping all these people and I'm not away from my family because I have a million aunts and uncles now and so many great friends. <laughs> I just want to thank all you guys for letting us into your home because we're away from ours. And no, we're not. Okay. <laughs> you. None of us wanted to leave. We'd all become so attached to a place few of us could even locate on a map before this trip. It was actually hard for us to leave. There was so much more work that needed to be done. Looking at all the t-shirts though, I realized we were not down Louisiana to complete the whole puzzle. We were just another piece. And when we left that Saturday morning, in just a few hours, another group would roll into Camp Good Earth and add their piece of the puzzle. And just like us, they would eventually realize that they were among something larger, among something bigger than themselves. They were among saints. I am. Um, I thought at the beginning of the week when we first got here, the first night it was going to be really cold, very hard, and everything. But after the first night, it's probably been one of the best weeks of my life. So I had a really, really good time, and I'm going to miss it. But at least we have a good memory to go back with. 